from Jila uh, Radharasa Sudaniti from Prabodhananda Saraswati Thakur, verse 20. Sri yeah. Radhi, Radhi Ke Surat Tarangi Nitamba Bhage Kanchi Kalapa Kalahangsa Kalanula Pai Manjira Sinjita Madhu Vratta Gunji Tangri Tankeru Bhai Shishiraya Svarasa Chatabihi O Sri Radhike The sash of bells on your playful erotic hips warble like swans and the ankle bells on your lotus-like feet Buzz like bees. Please cool me off with the effulgence of your own rasa. O Sri Radhike, the sash of bells on your playful erotic hips, marble like swans. And the ankle bells on your lotus like feet buzz like bees. Please cool me off with the effulgence of your own rasa. The title here is Sri Radha goes out to meet Sri Krishna. Commentary Sripat's mind dwells in the kingdom of transcendental pastimes as he witnesses Radha's rendezvous in his Siddhasvarup. He, she, quickly dresses Swamini properly before she rushes out. It is the service of Prema Pagani Radha who is mad with love for Krishna. While speaking sweetly about Krishna, Shripat dresses and ornaments Srimati properly. If Swamini would do it herself, everything would turn out upside down. She would hang her sash of bells on her neck her necklace on her ankles and her ankle bells on her waist and he would and he would smear her eyeliner on her foot soles and her footlock around her eyes how sweetly krishna calls radha with his flute playing how long can Srimati still remain calm? So here Srimati, she's very much agitated by the call of Krishna, by the knowing that she's going to meet him. Internally, she cannot remain calm. So only the Manjari can do, can dress her properly, decorate her properly, because the Manjari, she can stay calm. She has no desire to meet Krishna. Therefore, 
Our seva in the kunja is so much required and so much wanted by Swamini. Is it like this, Gurudev? Yeah, beautiful. Yes. Yes. Beautiful. Radhe. Radhe. Yeah. So beautiful. Sir, I take your leave, sir. I will come again. Radhe. Radhe. What is the... So nicely. Jai Ho. How sweetly Krishna calls Radha with his flute playing. How long can Srimati still remain calm? She loses her patience and says, O oh, Saki, what misery! My body is filled with the poison coming out of Krishna's flute. This sound forces itself into my ears, making the bashfulness in my body and mind melt, and the hairs on my body stand on end. While Srimati speaks, her voice gets chocked and she becomes very unsteady, out of desire to soothe her heart with the sight of Krishna. The enchanting flute player, seeing this, Sripat in his kinkari form says, O Radike, no one knows how to worship Krishna like you. Make your name, Radhika, useful by fulfilling the desires that Krishna so clearly expresses with the tune of his flute. What is the need of any further delay? Quickly go out to meet him. So here the Manjari is very much encouraging Sri Radhike not to waste any more time and go and fulfill the desires of Krishna, which he is telling with that certain flute playing to her. So she knows exactly what Krishna wants. By the yeah. way, that beautiful, beautiful. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> she knows exactly what Krishna wants by the way that he plays the flute. Like the Manjaris exactly know what Radhike wants. Is it gone? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. So like the Manjaris exactly knows what Radhika wants without yeah. it that she speaks to them only by glancing on them because they are so much connect connected with Swamini that they exactly know how she feels and what is needed at the moment. And here the Manjari can feel the distress of Radhike, her in inside feelings and is encouraging her, go, go, go and meet Krishna now and fu fulfill his desires. Yeah. I continue. Yeah. Quickly go out to meet him. Oh, Su Surat Tarangi, 
Nitamba bage, your botlocks reveal so many erotic pastimes. You will not be able to proceed quickly with this large botox. Therefore, I say, hurry up. <laughs> If you walk slowly, the bells on your sash will sing like the swans on the bank of the Yamuna and will announce the presence of Cupid. Rasatu Rasanapi Tavagana Jaghana Mandale Goshayatu Manmata Nidesham This is from Gita Govindam. <clears throat> Krishna will be astonished when he hears the bells jingling on your large buttocks. Here is a verse from Govinda Lilamrita. These words of the poets that Sri Radha's buttocks are like the bank of the Yamuna are true because her braid that reaches down to her buttocks is like the black Yamuna river. Her buttocks are its banks and the sash of bells around her buttocks are the swans. If not, then why can the king of dancers, Hari's mind, that dances the rasa dance, no, that dances the rasa there with the dancing girls of his desires, never grow tired of dancing? This here is the difference between the material world and the spiritual world. In the spiritual world, everything is transcendental. So these are not mundane pastimes. And the love is ever increasing, like the love of the devotee is never satiated, the desire and the sacred greed, the longing for this love and being part in these loving pastimes is never satiated because it's not something material. These are transcendental pastimes and they are eternal. So they are not bound on any material conception. Like Krishna here, he never gets tired dancing. Nobody gets tired of doing anything because everything is full of rasa that we can relish from that moment when we become the viewer, when we are in our Siddhasvarup. Then we can relish the rasa. And to do so, we have to understand that we are not the enjoyers. We are meant to be enjoyed. And the only enjoyer is Krishna. But because all of us, we have this tendency to enjoy this Purusha Abhiman is very predominant in us. We should cultivate our 
Prakriti Abhiman, our female energy, so that we are, we can realize that we are supposed to be enjoyed and we are not supposed to be the enjoyer. Like Gurudev says that if we think we are the doer, then we are in our male energy. And if we are the viewer, then we are in our female energy. The maid servant says, How sweetly you go on your rendezvous. How sweetly your ankle bells are jingling while you walk on. They sound just like the humming of bumblebees that follow your lotus-like feet being attracted to their fragrance and their honey. Bumblebees are following your lotus feet, greedy for their honey. And after you placed your charming footprint somewhere, they will come to kiss the earth. Gurudev, are we supposed to be like the bumblebees? Gurudev, I have a question. Can you hear me? Are we supposed to be like these bumblebees? Someone's in the room. <laughs> I continue. Maybe it's talking. I think it's true. It's okay. Yes, it's okay. Om Sri Radhika. Soothe your afflicted heart with the cooling splendor of Krishna, who is rasa personified and who shines like a fresh rain cloud. Svarasa Chattabi then means the effulgence of Krishna. Who is yours, Sva, and who is Rasa himself? Another meaning can be, O Radhe, please cool Krishna, whose heart is afflicted off with your own sweet Rasa. Please 
cool off the afflicted heart of this poor maidservant with the splendid rasa of the vision of your meeting with Shyama Sundara. See, this is the relief that Amanjari gets. This is the greatest pleasure for the maidservants if they can see that their beloved Radhika, that she is meeting with her beloved Krishna. This is the full satisfaction of their devotional service. So they get relief from that. That is the coolness for them. And also for us as practicing devotees, all this Rasik Shastra, particularly this Madhurya Ras, it is very cooling for our mind, who is always heated with many material things. So here we can cool down the heat of our mind. It has a cooling effect also on us. Because this is how we should or how we can concentrate and direct our mind towards the goal, toward, towards that, what we really want. So we cannot deny or neglect the mind. We have to give him an alternative on what to meditate so that ultimately the mind can become our friend and is helping us in our bhajan and is guiding us towards the lila and towards what to meditate on. Should we cool our mind like that, Gurudev? The teaching of the Samne, how we can cool our mind with the material desire to divine Samne's Kripa, how we can feel it. What is our mind is burning because of the material engagement. Mind is engaged in the material thinking only. Is burning mind. Is disturbance in my life. This is not giving me anything. It's all creating suffering in my life. But we, in a false ego, we think this is the right thing we are doing. Mm. We are doing what, what we are doing. We are just living in the mercy. What we receive is a mercy. What we will lose is a mercy. <laughs> Jai Ho. <coughs> Please pull off the afflicted heart of this poor maidservant with the splendid rasa of the vision of your meeting with Shyama Sundara. Cool off my ears with the sound of your jingling bells, my eyes 
with the sight of your beautiful buttocks, my tongue, by making me glorify the sweetness of your rendezvous, my nose with the smell of your lotus feet that are followed by buzzing bumblebees and my skin with the cooling touch of these lotus feet. How beautiful this is described. How we can engage all our senses in loving devotional service. So that all our material senses became spiritualized. And if we can do it here within our Sadakdeha, then we will be able to do it in our Siddhadeha. Wow. Because. Beautiful. Because Govardhan means to increase our senses, but to increase our spiritual senses that we have within our spiritual body. It is not the meaning of increasing our material senses. So this is very beautiful, very sweet description. Very loving. And this is how Amanjari is feeling. She's very sweet and full of love and everything is so natural. These prayers are so sweet because they are made during absorption in the Siddha Svarup, the practice the practicing devotees will also experience all this by Srimati's grace. That is the point. It is all by mercy by Radhika's mercy and by Gurudev's mercy, by the mercy of the whole Guru Parampara, because this Bhakti path is a path of mercy. And how we can receive this mercy if we have the right attitude, if we can surrender ourselves and make us available for that mercy who always is there but only because of our own blockages we cannot get the mercy so we are the ones who have have to very consciously work on that and clarify our obstacles remove our obstacles and our blockages so that we can be in the flow. The practicing devotees will also experience all this by Srimati's grace. There is nothing sweeter than this in the whole world. And it makes the devotee think he is directly in Srimati's company. His attachment to material life will decrease and his remembrance will gradually become more intense. Because the more that we are realizing this and making experience in this, the more insignificant becomes sense gratification, naturally it will decrease. Our interest is decreasing because material sense gratification is very 
temporary. It's a temporary thing. It's an illusion. And if we are realizing that we are a soul and more than that, that we have an eternal form, which is our constitutional position, means what we are meant to be, then very naturally we lose any interest in any material activity. And if we are engaging in loving devotional service, we can engage all our senses, mind and intelligence in devotional service. So we can even spiritualize our material senses. Slowly, another re revelation approaches. The stream of transcendental visions flows on without interruption. Vinodini, why are you standing there? Quickly proceed on the pathways of Raja, O Jew-like lover of Krishna. Hearing those words of your maidservants, quickly go to give yourself to Govinda. You see, this is the only concern a maidservant has that their Swamini goes and meet her beloved and go quickly. They are encouraging her, go, go, don't wait. Don't let your lover wait. The sash of bells on your buttocks gives great joy during your erotic sports, warbling like swans, and your elegant ankle bells jingle sweetly like humming bees that follow your lotus feet. God, hey. Says, O oh, merciful Radike, make your maidservant happy with this rasa. Wow. What a nice prayer. He prays, O oh, merciful Radike, make your maidservant happy with this rasa. So this is what it should be meditated on during our Lila Smarana so that we can also dive deep in this. And if we can do so, then all these pastimes becomes very vivid and very real and we can relish them. So by the mercy of Sri Radhika, she will give us the taste for this so that we can relish this rasa. And once that we relish this, then we want more of it. And it's natural for us because we have a material body, we are in the marginal state that we are coming out of this. And then again, we are within the bodily consciousness. But that is also mercy because it should increase our sacred greed. 
to get there again, so that we never stop endeavoring and always keep on chanting and serving the devotees and doing all our devotional activities and having always fixed the goal. And Gurudev wants us to reach there and he is showing us how to get there, showing us the way, helping us on the way because he loves us all so much. Yeah, so here ends the purport and I think this was the exactly same verse of yesterday was here yesterday oh, this is was the same words I saw anyway I can read one more should I more time is there okay I start with verse 21 Sri Radike Suratarangini Divya Keli Kalola Marini Lasat Vadanar Vavinde Syama Mritam Bundidi Sangama Tivravegi Nyavarta Nabi Ruchire Mama Sanidehehi O Sri Radike O oh, enjoyer of erotic pastimes, O oh, river of divine pastimes, O oh, beautiful lotus-faced girl, O oh, strong river meeting the nectar ocean named Shyama, O oh, girl with the beautiful navel-like uh, with the beautiful navel, like a deep whirlpool. Please, come closer to me. O Sri Radhike, O enjoyer of erotic pastimes, O river of divine pastimes, O beautiful lotus-faced girl, O strong river meeting the nectar ocean named Shyama, O girl with the beautiful navel like a deep whirlpool, please come closer to me. Means, please give me your association. Please be, be with me. Please accept me as your maidservant. Please allow me to do seva for you. You see, this is very, very intimate prayer. Very close. The maidservants are actually the most intimate friends of Radhika the closest to her. Nobody can be so close and so intimate like the maidservants. And that is the gift of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu who came here to this world and give us the Hare Krishna Mahamantra with his meant, it is meant to give us Manjari Bhav. That is what the chanting of this Hare Krishna Mahamantra is supposed to be, supposed to give us, because it is coming from from Golok Vrindavan, and it is a completely Madhurya Mai Yugala Radha Krishna mantra. So we should chant with that in mind, with that as as our goal, that we want Manjari Bhav.
we have to be very distinguished and very fixed in that. And then by the mercy of the Holy Name, He will give us the desired goal, the desired feeling. Because the Holy Name reciprocates with us in the way that we are addressing it. Like Gurudev can see all his disciples, where they are, how they are, how they feel. He can see the heart. So Radha Mohan, they can see our heart. We cannot hide anything from them. So our desire should be clear. And it should be our real heartfelt desire. So that means that we don't want anything else. We don't want any sense gratification for us. We don't want to be no more the enjoyer in this material world. We want to be a maidservant serving our Swamini. So the title here is The Curse of Radha's Love Commentary When Krishna plays his all-enchanting flute, Srimati rushes out to meet him as a forceful river goes forward to meet the ocean. So she cannot do anything else. As soon as she hears the flute playing, she rushes out immediately. Nothing can stop her anymore. So natural as the river, forceful river, he cannot do anything else than flow to the ocean. It's natural. It's a natural thing. So for Swamini to follow Krishna's flute playing is very much natural. As for us, it has to become a natural thing to be a maidservant, to have the desire to be there. Natural. It is very important. Zoom is something very nice, but direct association is much more higher and much more important. So to come together on a regular basis, have sanghas, exchange our realizations and grow together, it's a very important thing. Because in the spiritual world, we are not alone. There are innumerable manjaris, like there are innumerable jiva souls. So this is not being done alone. We are supposed to help each other in the service, in life in general. And if we can, we should come to Vrindavan as often as possible to get the mercy and to do the progress which is required for our own benefit to get all the realizations that is needed to finally get in our eternal spiritual body and to know what our seva is, what our form is, what the color of our clothes is, what our ornaments are, and what our seva is.
That doesn't mean that we have only one seva in the spiritual world. We can do anything what is needed and we will be trained up by our Guru Manjari. So as I mentioned also the day before, there is never a question of being independent. Also in the spiritual world, we are dependent on each other. Just as during the rainy season, the current of a river becomes very forceful and floods its own banks, Tukala. Similarly, the Ganga River, named Radha, overflows the restrictions of her Dukula, two families, her own and her in-law's family. When it's filled with extraordinary, extraordinarily sweet waves of passionate love for Krishna and forcefully flows on towards the Krishna ocean. That is why Sripat calls Swamini Suratarangini, the river of the god Ganga, here in this verse. This river of passion breaks all dams of religious or traditional principles with its great force of desire for Krishna, not caring about the danger that might occur on the way. And that is Bhav. So we are not following all these rules and regulations for the sake of the rules and regulations. We are following them because they are helpful in our bhajan. But it is not the point to following the rules and regulations if we cannot generate bhav, if we are not coming into the bhav state. So sometimes we have to break all the rules that in the book for the pleasure of the divine couple. Bhava means also sweetness. So Radha Mohan, they are attracted to a devotee who has that sweetness in his heart. One may follow, may, one may be very strict following everything, but, but has no sweetness in his heart. And someone who is not so strictly following all the rules, but has that sweetness, that is what they are attracted to. This is Raganuga Bhakti and not Vaidhi Bhakti. We should forget about Vaidhi Bhakti. Madhurya means loving devotional service. Loving is Raganuga on the spontaneous. We are spontaneously attracted and want to do spontaneously. Mm -hmm. Oh, 
Three part as a dedicated maidservant follows Sri Radha, helping her to meet the Shyama Ocean, making her taste the nectar of Shyama Sundara by addressing her in the above mentioned sweet ways. O Radhike, O greatest worshipper of Krishna, you are called Radhika because you fulfill all of Sri Krishna's desires. Krishna Vanchapurti Rupa Kore Aradhane Ataeva Radhika Nam Purane Vakane this is a quote from Chaitanya Charitamrita. Sri Radhika diligently prepares herself for going out, Abhisar. The poet Govindada sings, to prepare herself for walking over the thorny pathways on the way to the trysting grove at night. Trysting? Trysting grove. At night, she strews thorns over her yard in the daytime and learns how to tolerate their pricks. She learns how to wrap her ankle bells into her cloth so that she can run at night without making any sound. She throws water over her yard in the daytime to learn how to walk over slippery paths at night. She covers her eyes with her hands in the daytime to learn how to walk in the dark at night. And she rewards a snake charmer with a jeweled bangle for teaching her a mantra that will stifle the snakes that might attack her at night and that will protect her from the attacks of wild beasts of prey. It is as if she is deaf for the words of her superiors, and she simply smiles like a fool when she, he when she hears the criticism and rebukes of her relatives. For Shyama Sundara's sake, she takes even unlimited misery to be like great bliss. The word Suratarangini also means enjoyer of erotic play. Sripad says, Radhe, the waves of these erotic enjoyments are playing on each of your limbs. O divine river of pastimes, you are decorated with all the waves of transcendental pastimes in which you are only interested in Shyama's happiness. 
how many sweet past sports of Swamini Sripad remembers when he addresses her like that. Hela sat vadana ravinde, O girl with the beautiful lotus-like face. Your face is like a beautiful lotus flower on top of the golden stem of your body, shining on the current of the Ganga and attracting the heart and mind of a bee. Madhusudana, the thirsty Krishna bee, who becomes thirsty after your honey? Sri Rupakoswami described Radha's face as transgressing the beauty of a whole forest of fragrant, blossoming lotus flowers. Mukulasa Ulam Kamalavanam Ulangayati Vidak this is from Vidakta Madhava. Your navel is like an enchanting whirlpool in the Ganga of Rasa, and Madhava's mind gets sucked into that whirlpool like a blade of grass as soon as he sees it. Shyama Mritam Bun Nidi Sangama Tivra Vagini You are like the Ganga that forcefully flows towards the nectar ocean named Shyama. This Ganga is as holy and blissful to the Sakis and Manjaris as the Ganga on earth is to the Hindus, and they always bat there. The minds of the practicing devotees also constantly bat in the water of this very holy place to purify themselves and become qualified for the service of the Yugala Kishora. The minds of the practicing devotees, that means that some practice has to be there. Without doing nothing, there is also not coming anything. So we have to do an endeavor for that to get there so that we will become purified gradually by practice. Our practice is hearing and chanting as much as we can in our individual possibilities. But some endeavor has to be there. Like without planting the seed, nothing grows. So if we do anything, there will be no fruits. Like at the time of initiation, Gurudev is planting the Bhaktilata seed within our heart. But then we have to water it so that that seed can grow. The Bhaktilata beach can grow. And we have to be very careful to that. And, pro and protecting the plant within our heart and watering with the chanting of the holy name so that gradually our mind becomes purified from all material things and we should get more spiritual impressions by the practice like we do practicing, hearing, and chanting 
and Lila Smaranam. Bo both has to be done. We cannot do one without the other. Otherwise, we can not keep our mind steady. If we do only hearing and chanting without Lila Smaranam, then our mind is going somewhere. And only Lila Smaranam without hearing and chanting will not work. Our mind cannot be steady. So to keep the mind steady, we have to practice both. And here is very clearly mentioned. This is the grace of Sripad telling us how we can do it. He tells by practice. So in our Sadakteha, we are doing practical devotional service. We are engaging body, mind and intelligence in devotional service. So that even this material body and senses can be spiritualized by engaging them. And internally, we have to engage the mind in the remembrance of the Leela. Like if we read every day and we can dive deep within this Leela during our chant, we can do the Leela Smaranam, means the remembrance of what we have heard. So we can do like, uh, this is like schooling the mind, teaching the mind to, so that we can go more deep. The minds of the practicing devotees also constantly bathe in the water of this very holy place to purify themselves and to become qualified for the service of the Yugala Kishore. Sripad is worried about Swamini's welfare when he sees her running so fast to meet Krishna and he calls her Mama Sunny Dehi, stay close to me. Don't run that don't run so fast. There are many thorns and pebbles on the road that will injure your tender foot soles. Radhe Pati Muncha Sambramam Abhisare Charaya Charanam Buruha. Dhiram Sukumare. This is from Gita Govindam. I am running behind you. I cannot walk so fast. Take me with you. When Srimati hears these worried and anxious calls of her maidservant, she will certainly become merciful to her. Wow. <laughs> you see, this is so much closeness and so much uh, deep, intimate relationship. The Manjaris always are with Radhika. Only they can be with her all the time. Her gopi girlfriends cannot. In some situation, they cannot be in the Kunja. They are not allowed to be because Srimati is meeting with her Shyama. But the maidservants, they can be there. She is hiding them under the bed, but they are there. And here also the maidservant, she says, Oh Radhika, you cannot run so fast. All these thorns on the way, you will hurt your lotus-like feet. Please, please slow down. And by hearing that, Radhika, she will become merciful to her maidservant. Jai. So here is ending the commentary of verse 21. And today we are 
every day we are very much blessed <laughs> to hear that blessed by the mercy of Srila Prabodhananda Saraswati Thakur to give us his most deepest realizations to us so that we can realize our own Siddha Swarup and our own Sevas that we have by the mercy of Sri Guru and by our desire. But so much. Thank you.